So you're basically breaking that contract with that that lender and that's how they can punish you is by saying hey we're going to send your your information to the credit bureaus because you're not paying back what you promised that you said you would so, so uh, welcome nancy it's so so nice to have you here well great let me introduce myself first my name is Nancy Ward and I'm a financial coach. I help my clients free themselves from the constraints of credit card debt, all without needing traditional budgeting methods. So imagine enjoying greater financial flexibility with more money in your bank account to prioritize what truly matters for your family's financial well-being. I have been a financial coach for three years now. I was doing it part-time and now I'm doing it full-time. I felt that I have gone through so many experiences myself before I got married. I had $40,000 in credit card debt. So if uh, you're thinking, hey, I only have six, you know, <laughs> it's, it, there's always somebody who has it worse, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, and after my, my divorce, I decided that I wasn't going to do that again because I, I wasn't happy with where I was. It was depressing. I couldn't do things. I didn't have the money. Um, I, it was it was just so so hard and so stressful. So once I uh, once I was divorced and kind of went figured out where everything was going in my life, I just said, "There's no way that I want to get to that point." Now I've got two kids to maintain, um, you know, between swapping with dad on his nights and so forth. So I just said, "You know, I've I've got to make a change." And my low point came when I had to pay my property taxes and I had to borrow money from my kids' bank accounts. Because if I paid for it with a credit card, what would end up happening is they would the the county would charge me an extra six percent because I was using a credit card. And then on top of that, mm. <laughs> I would put it on my credit card and then I would probably have to pay 18% APR because I wouldn't be able to get it paid off in that month. So mm. I knew things had to change and I came up with a, a program and it's called the weekly debt plan. And now I take a hundred dollars out of my bank account every week and put it into a savings account. And what I love about that is that at the, you know, when the bill comes, I've got $2,400 in order to, to write a check and it's not coming out of my bank account because it came out of my bank account every single week. So it's a little bit of funny math, <laughs> but I, right. But you know, who had, who, hey, who has the gumption to, to save $2,500 every six months? Nobody does because we're always spending it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I also do that same thing with my bills. So if I've done um, balance transfers or basically any other things, I, at one point I had to do uh, braces for my kids and put that on a 0% credit card as long as I paid it off within a year. So I just took that amount, divided it by tw by how many weeks were left it to pay for it. And every week I was sending that vendor money. And that actually did help my credit score, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But because I was constantly sending money, any time that the credit credit bureaus were checking my credit, it was, I owed less. <laughs> so it actually worked out to my advantage that my credit score was going up because I was paying it weekly. So um, that's just a little bit of, of, of insight behind me and my business and the struggles that I've gone through. And I, I really don't want others to go through that same struggle. And that's why I became a financial coach. I'm really good with numbers. I love data anal analytics. So I'm the one that's going to be sifting through your finances and go, okay, I found this, 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 and this, because I'm looking for that needle in the haystack that you might not be realizing that you're overpaying on this, or how can we change the, this, this shopping habit? Again, I, I talked about not, not going for a budget because it's just like losing weight. If you wanted to lose weight, you'd stop eating the cookies. You'd start exercising more. You start drinking better, you know, drinking water. So that's the same thing as budgeting. If you were going to budget, you should have already had. So mm -hmm. I'm working with those people who are like, yeah, budgeting just doesn't work for me. It stresses me out. Well, let's focus on the credit card debt. And that's what I'm able to do. So, all right, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about um, 
the credit score. So uh, this is entitled Increase Your Credit Score by Five Simple Steps. And there's five really important parts of a credit score. So uh, here in, in America, United States, um, a credit score really is, is helping you to borrow money. And having a good credit score is really important because that shows your credit worthiness. And you're thinking, okay, well, what does that mean? It's kind of like when you're back in high school or college and you took courses, right? And with those courses, you got A's and B's and C's and hopefully not D's. But as you are doing all of your courses at the end of the quarter, end of the semester, you had a grade point average. So that was an average of all of the things that you did. Same thing as your finances, because your credit score is based on a whole bunch of different factors. So helping yourself with these factors and doing them correctly is really going to help you out. So the first one is payment history. So if you've had, um, uh, make sure that you're using timely payments. So anything that you do, you always want to make sure that you're at least paying the minimum payment. If you have a late charge on that, what's going to end up happening is that usually they'll let you slide for up to 30 days, and then they're going to su submit it to the credit bureau. It means, hey, they're not responsible because, you know, again, you're signing it, you're technically signing a contract when you get that credit to say, yes, I agree that I'm going to pay you back. So you're basically breaking that contract with that, that lender. And that's how they can punish you is by saying, hey, we're going to send your, your information to the credit bureaus because you're not paying back what you promised that you said you would. Hmm. So yeah. That is, so so paying them, pay, like I said, even paying the minimum is the most important part, but also too, if you can go ahead and uh, pay it, pay more than you can, great. Uh, if not, at least just pay the minimums until you're able to pay more. So that is the one thing, the payment history. And that, unfortunately, if you hear about people with bankruptcy, it's because they continuously stopped paying those payments and it got to the point where they had no choice and they might have had to do uh, bankruptcy or a debt consolidation loan. So those are some things. Uh, the second thing that's really important is your credit utilization. And that's basically saying I'm maxed out. <laughs> so if you only have two credit cards and you they're both at $1,000 and you have 900 charged on each one, easy math, you have a 90% credit utilization. The credit bureaus really want you to be about 30% or less. And you're thinking, well, Nancy, I have a, a car payment. I have a mortgage. I have this, I have that. Again, go back to college. All of those factors are put together and then it's an average. So you may not have much on your credit card or a little bit on your credit card, but you've got a mortgage and you've got a car payment your utilization might be in 12, 15, 18%. Again, it depends on your numbers. You, we, we'd have to look at your numbers specifically, but having a mortgage is not a bad thing because the credit bureaus take that into consideration and they know that that number is always going down because you're not going to add more money to a mortgage, but you're going to add more money to a credit, uh, a credit card. So that is really the important thing. So again, it takes it from all of your information. So even if you have $100 on this card and $500 on that card, you might be maxed. Again, it's going to be the average. So that great point average is kind of giving you that indication as far as how much credit utilization you have. But keeping it under 30% is really, really important. I'm sorry. So if you do need to borrow more money via credit card, yeah. is it yeah. better to then get a third or a fourth card is that this uh, tactic um that is a possibility so sometimes you can call up your credit card companies and ask for uh, more a, a bigger credit line that uh, depending on the company they might say sure we'll go ahead and give you a few more thousand dollars but what they're going to ask you first is what your current income is mm -hmm. because again they want to make sure that you have enough money coming in not not that specifically, but they want to know, okay, you, you're making more money than you, you were last time you, you asked us for this or got the credit card. 
Um, because when you fill out the, the credit card application, you have to say how much your income is. So that might be a first step is to talk to your current cards and ask them to go ahead and ex give you more credit. Now, if you went to a store and they're like, hey, if you buy today, you get 20% off if you open up our store card. You know how that goes. No. Yeah. I don't know if it's like that in Sweden. But it is. You know, it is. <laughs> everybody, right, everybody wants to get some money out of you. Yeah. Um, if you open up that card, again, more than likely, they're going to look at your credit score and say, okay, well, this is a store credit, but we only give about $1,500 out and looks like you have some good credit. So we're going to allow you $500. So opening up that card will change your credit score. But again, if you're not maxing that out, that big number of how much is available that you're not spending versus how much you're spending, that's your credit utilization. So yes, from time to time, if you wanted to open up a new card or you got some great deal in the mail or you're like, hey, I really want to consolidate my credit cards, let me go ahead or I'm going through a rough time. Yes, you can go ahead and get a credit card. And there's a lot of them that are out there that are 0% for 6, 12, 18 months. So therefore you can eliminate your finance charges. But again, if you don't pay it when the time is due, then it's like, poof, now you have 18% added on every single month. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a, that's, again, it's a, it's a personal thing that you have to look at to see, is that new credit worth it? Mm -hmm. You have to call Nancy and find out how to solve this. <laughs> Help. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the third factor is your length of credit history. And that that's like gym class, right? It's it's an easy A. You're always going to have that inside of your, your grade point average is an easy A or art class or things like that. So that's one of those small things that if, you know, you've been an adult for at least 10 years, don't even worry about it. If you've just gotten out of college and you, you know, again, you're new to the credit bureaus and they're like, well, we don't know what kind of person you're going to be. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to rack up your rates. We're going to only give you $500 and we might say, hey, you have to put a deposit down because we don't trust you yet. Well, they don't trust you because they don't know what your credit history is. So again, those of us who've been an adult 10 years or older, that that's nothing because you've got some credit history. They can go back and say, okay, over the last X amount of years, this is what your credit score has been. All right, no problem. But again, that's one small factor in, in all of your credit scores. So <laughs> that, that's like a bonus. Like I said, like gym class, you know, you're all automatic A. So I'm sorry so, to clarify, yeah. does that increase your credit score then? It really doesn't. It just, okay. it, it's again, it, it's like a, it's like your driver's insurance. They've, they, they can, they can go back and look at your history and go, okay, yeah, this person's a good driver. I'm going to make sure that the rates stay low. Oh, this person is a good person to, to give credit. They haven't had any defaults. They haven't had any bankruptcies. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's just one of those, it, it, it's like I said, it's a small thing, but it, it's nice for them to see that you do have history of being a responsible person and paying your bills. So it's just, it's just a factor that makes it easier to get a card if you need one, as opposed to it affecting your, your credit score. Right. Right. Okay. So uh, yeah, it, it is helpful in, in, in the whole grand scheme of things. It just means you're a wiser person. <laughs> right. Hopefully. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and then the next one is your types of credit that you use. So having a mix of different credit. So like I mentioned before about uh, your mortgage. Well, some people are like, oh my gosh, I got to pay off my mortgage. I got to pay off my mortgage. Yes, you do, but you don't really have to. If you're not able to focus on the other um, focus on the other types of credit. So again, you have your house as a collateral. That's why you have a mortgage. You have your car as collateral. That is why you have a car payment. When you have credit card debt, they don't know if all of a sudden you're going on vacation or you're mad at your family and just going on a shopping spree. That is that, that that is unsecured debt they're just taking a chance on you that you're gonna pay so if your credit cards are higher but your mortgage is here and your car payments here but your your credit cards going higher they start to worry because 
you're showing some habits of spending too much money. But if you have a nice balance of it, that will help you as well. So again, that's one of the smaller factors in your credit score. But again, having a mix of that different credit is, is, a, is a good thing. Uh, new credit. So going back to what you were saying about, do I open it up? Now, again, if you were like, okay, I'm mad at my spouse or, you know, whatever, I'm upset. I'm gonna, just going to go spend a whole bunch of money and you max out this card, you max out that card, and then you go get another card and you go get another card, and you go get another card. All of shopping, a sudden- It's called shopping therapy, Nancy. Come on. <laughs> shopping therapy, the everyone needs right. it. But the creditors are like, whoa, what's going on? We're not comfortable mm. with this. Why do you keep on getting more, you know, you keep on adding more debt in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be able to pay that back? Mm -hmm. Something is so amiss. Right. So that's a really big red flag to the credit bureaus because they're like, oh, what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you just racked up all this credit card debt and said, I'm going to go buy a house. The, the bank is going to look at you and go, um, I don't know what you got going on, but we're not going to allow you to, you know, we're, when you buy it, when you buy a house and you have a mortgage, they really look at your income, the debt to income ratio and say, I need to know every single bill that you're paying, every single credit. They don't care about your um, utilities and gas and food and stuff like that, but they look at the other bigger things. How, you know, how, what about your house insurance and what about your car payments? What about those other things? How much credit card debt do you have? What's your credit score? And then they go, whoa, 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 whoa. You just opened up a whole, whole bunch of credit uh, things. Are are you going to be a reliable um, college tuition? Many people are struggling with that. Right. Yeah, How much yeah. of a responsible buyer are you? Because are you going to turn this around and all of a sudden you're not going to be able to pay your bills? We're extending you all of this credit line and now you can't pay your bills and, you know, you're going to get in trouble and you might go into default or bankruptcy or things like that. So it's, you just, you, you got to be cautious of when you're opening up new credit because that is, like I said, that's that's a little bit of a red flag. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose it's a temptation because all of a sudden you feel freer. I mean, it's a psychological thing, isn't it? That yes. all of a sudden, oh, I've got a little more here. So instead of tightening your belt and having, you know, being on toasts every day, uh, you buy that steak because, oh, I deserve it. And then this cycle begins. Right. And then as you get the bills that come in, your minimum payment just went from 39 to 79 and mm -hmm. you keep on spending. And next month, your minimum payment is 129. Mm -hmm. Well, it's including all of that annual percentage rate APR on top of that. So if you weren't able to pay that $79 a month, and now that you owe $129 a month, you're like, how do I, how do I pay this? But you can't afford things, so you're putting more in the credit card. Mm. So it is a it is a vicious, vicious. circle. And, Very, yeah. Right. And a lot of people just stick their head in the sand. Mm. And that's what I'm here for is to say, okay, I'm I'm kind of like your shoppers anonymous, if you will, <laughs> to say, okay, I've got that. I need help. I because actually they don't have a talk client. To family. I actually have a client with that issue. Well, that's one of our issues, but when she doesn't feel good, and that's I'm I'm jokingly saying it's it's shopping therapy but it is i mean actually not as a joke because um people feel better and 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 yeah it it's it's fun to buy that bling but then it only lasts for a very short while and uh, there you yeah. are again yeah and it doesn't even last until the credit card payment that that mm. high doesn't last right but yet maybe in half an hour to an hour right <laughs> right and then you regret it that yeah. you're like, well, I did this, but you know, you can't take that steak back. You can take, you know, your shoes back and your blouse back and your mm -hmm. whatever, but you can't take that steak back mm -hmm. because you consumed it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it is, it's, it's a little bit of psychological, but it's, it's again, stop eating mm -hmm. the cookies, mm -hmm. <laughs> start taking a walk and start doing some exercise because 
you're telling me that you want to lose weight, but you're not doing a darn thing about it. Mm. We can't wish to lose weight. There is no magic formula. There is no money tree hanging out outside your door. So that there's the the in and the out of calories, and here it is with you in and out of of um, dollars, the, the liquidity, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, well, yeah. No, just uh, what else is there that we can do? Well, the other so those are the five things. It's your payment history, your credit utilization your length of credit history, your types of credit, and then your new credit. Now, also to, again, here in North America, we have two types of credit scores. We have a FICO and a Vantage score. And each of them have different charts uh, available online. So you can always just type in, you know, credit score, Vantage, Vantage or at FICO, because sometimes your credit cards will actually provide that free information to you in the apps so you can check it and then if you have alerts on then it'll say hey your credit score went up your credit score went down and that's what's really good about it too is to say okay why did it go up oh yeah i paid that off I, you know i got i got a bonus at work or what have you i paid that down and then if your if your credit score went down you're like why did it go down oh that's right i opened up a new store credit card so I had, a, you know, an inquiry to my credit report. I just added more uh, credit line, but I also made a purchase with that in order to buy a piece of jewelry at the, at the jewelry store. So that's what's nice too, is that you can keep track of that or at least have a, a mental thought process of it because of these credit card apps are giving us more information. You know, 10, 20 years ago, you would you'd only get your credit score if you went and did a, a big loan like a car or a mortgage and then they give you the paperwork and say well your credit score is this this is the reason why you know we gave you this percentage for your loan so now it's more prevalent that you know again every day i can go into my my chase visa app and go oh what's my credit score today what's my credit utilization okay you know so it gives me all of these things you know, I'm like, oh, okay. So at one point in time, I was at 21% because I had a loan and I paid it off. I got my my taxes back from the government and I paid paid it down within a few weeks, what whatever. And it's like, oh, now I'm down to 12%. Oh, that's pretty nice. Again, I'm trying to keep it under 30 and I, you know, I've got a car and I got a mortgage and things like that. But that's what's nice about it too is the fact that it's got that, um, it's got it's got all the details to it so then you know what's going on and you know you don't have to question it anymore because the apps are giving you a lot of data points so you don't have to you know constantly worry about this and ask for a credit credit report every single year so you you've got that available so that's definitely something to look into um because like i said each the 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 vantage score and the fico score have two different charts of where you are and you're good, you know, so one, one number might be 680, which is good, but 68 or 80 over here is excellent. So again, it's, you've got two different scores, but as long as you know that what the, what the range is within that version of the score, you're good to go. I know. You need to keep easy. track of both of them. Not necessarily. Um, I oh, mean, I see. So just as, as long as you right. learn one of them and then you kind of stick to that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Because then that okay. again, that just that's just a nice heartbeat of where your credit is and how how responsible you are with your money. Basically, it's like a report card. <laughs> so what what um what's the first thing you do when you help someone? Like what what's the first thing you look at so you can increase someone's uh, credit? Well, the first thing that we look at is all the data points. So that is the one question I ask my clients when we first get started is, can you look up your credit score? And they're able to do that, like I said, through the credit card apps, depending on which one they have. And we, we do an assessment of just everything that's out there. What are your loans? What are your credit card debt and things like that? So then we can look at it and say, OK, here's your credit utilization. So that gives us an idea of how, you know, what your max is um, and, and what your, you know, that percentage rate. So then we are the percentage of credit utilization so we can have a snapshot of time. So it's just like going on the scale. Okay, I am X amount of pounds. Great, all right, starting today, this is what my pounds are. 
Sorry, you're you're kilos, aren't you? <laughs> yes, we're kilos. Yeah, okay. I understand pounds somewhat. I had to think about that. <laughs> it's double, but, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Somewhere it's around like 2. there. It's like 2.3 or yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Somewhere like, around Google there. helps me <laughs> solve that problem if I need it. Um, but it's just like stepping on the scale to find out what your weight is. This is a snapshot to say, what are your what's your credit card debt and so forth. So then we look at that. We figure out what's the best method first to attack that credit card debt. And in, in most cases, I say to people, just take one credit card at a time. The reason why is because you, you know, you, if you said, oh, I'm going to send $25 to each credit card, it just kind of goes out in the wash because you're paying so much in interest fees. So I always look at it and say, well, you know, let's look at what's the best first credit card to, 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 to bring down, whether it's you know, extra money or you do a chore for your neighbor and they pay you $20 or whatever, you know, how can you take that one credit card and start moving forward to, to, to seeing results that you're paying it off? And then the other key is putting that credit card away. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't you use scissors? Aren't you supposed to use scissors? You can use scissors, you can put it in the freezer, <laughs> all of those good things. But one of the one of the biggest tips I would suggest to you is that once you get that first credit card paid off, do not close it. Oh. Because that will affect your credit score. Oh. Because you just said, hey, I have a thousand dollars. I was at nine hundred dollars. Now I'm to zero. So now I have a thousand dollars credit utilization. Uh -huh. That's gonna help you, okay? Ooh, sneaky. Right. So you no. This is this right. is money planning. What? How do you phrase it? Uh, financial um, planning to to finan keep the card. Planning, right. Yes. You right. keep the card and use that number. Yes. Got it. Right. Very clever. Right. So that that's sometimes hard for people because they want to use that credit card. But you seriously just need to tuck it away, put it in a filing cabinet. I don't, I don't care. Take it out of your wallet. You are not going to use it unless you're, you know, in a situation where you have to for an emergency. But that's the point of working with somebody like me is to say, we need to get to that point where you either have an emergency fund or you have an emergency credit card. If something comes up, you need new tires for your vehicle. You don't have the cash for it. Okay. You've got this one credit card that has nothing on it. You're going to use it. You're going to pay it off whether it's one month or two, but it's going to go as fast as possible to get this off of the credit card. Right. But the point is, is again, you don't want to close it okay. because it's just like opening up a card. Mm -hmm. you're, you're moving too much of your credit numbers around. So just tuck it away. Okay. And okay. when you get to that point where you have three or four of them tucked away, Ooh. wow, what? I mean, just, just the stress that comes off of you, mm -hmm. right? I'm sorry. Can I, I, I didn't follow exactly. I'm a bit um, meticulous. So, That's but right. you're still paying off the minimum on the other cards, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because you don't so, want to be late, but right. like I said, you know, every month that minimum is what their minimum is plus interest fees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Majority of them here in the United States are like $39. But if you owe interest, it's going to be more than thirty nine dollars. Yeah, very painful. So if you, like I said, if you send that extra twenty five dollars in for that credit card, it's not really going anywhere. I'd rather you just focus on one credit card okay. to to just really pull that one down. Minimum payments on everybody else, mm -hmm. but take that one credit card and bring it down as fast as you can. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good. Yes, you don't want to. You want to keep up with that. Right, <laughs> right. So yes. you don't, uh, yeah, mess it up in the other end. So what exactly. else would you do? What What step two? What's the next thing that you help people figure out? Uh, again, we just we kind of look at that that um, we look at the credit card and we get that all taken care of. And the next step that I go with take them through is to look at their category spending. I know it sounds like budgeting, but it's not. Ooh, because budgeting, oof. Right, yeah. again, a budgeting <laughs> is such a negative, ugh, I don't want to do that. I, you know, I still want to enjoy my cookies. Well, what we do with category spending is we say, okay, let's look at the last month, two months, three months, whatever the case may be, in order to say, 
All right, what have you been spending a lot of money on? Oh, okay. Well, why is this category so expensive? Oh, you had to, you know, you had a lot of gas because you were driving around a lot and you had to get new tires. Okay, usually you only spend two hundred dollars a month on on uh, gasoline, but this month it was more just because you had those things. Okay, that's understandable. But when we're looking at the dining out, that sometimes is a bigger category. It's like, well, okay, let's take that dining out category and let's let's go down a little bit deeper and say, where are you going a lot? Okay, you're you're getting your, you know, your your morning breakfast at uh, the fast food restaurant. Is there an, is there a way that you can make that change? Or you're spending a lot. Uh, I, I need to go to Amazon's Anonymous. Ah, yes. I buy a lot of things on Amazon, but you know, again, mm -hmm. let's look at the categories to say how can we reduce those categories? Because again, you know, depending on your family, you you might your groceries might be a lot, they might be a little. And I know a lot of people are like, I'm really trying to save money, but sometimes you can't not save money just because, you know, it just this might be the one trip that you had to go get toilet paper and paper towels and laundry detergent. And it's like, oh my gosh. Why is my grocery bill so high? Well, each one of those is anywhere from ten to twenty dollars a piece, plus your groceries and your fresh foods and your milk and eggs and whatever. So the second step is we go into that category of spending in order to help them reduce overall what they're spending. Yeah, and then it's not as painful because you don't have right. to stop going to a coffee shop <clears throat> maybe just pick another one you don't go to starbucks you'll go to you know the local corner store and, and get your little fix and because because th there are these again emotional spending as, as you said amazon or wherever you do that and and it is important that we allow ourselves to do these little things right um but right. yeah if you, if you look at the individual um items then you can tweak that tweak that and 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 still get your your pleasure just in a cheaper yeah way exactly and and and, and if you look at it and go wow i didn't realize how much i was it's more of a self revelation if you will mm, to go wow exactly. i didn't realize i was going and getting this so many times mm -hmm. so it's just like cheating on a diet yeah you know if 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 your girlfriend says, uh, "Hey, I'm count. going out for my birthday," <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna enjoy that yeah. meal. You might have a drink. You might have a bite of that dessert. But mm. no, okay. How can I change for the next week? All right. Can mm. I add some more exercise? I've got to go back to you know my fruits and vegetables and things like that. So you know you don't want to stop yourself from enjoying life, but also you know be cautious of what you're doing. I, personal story on my end is, you know, back in 2019, you know, obviously before the whole world just went crazy. Um, I, I was like, you know what, I really, I, I want to take my kids on a vacation, but I don't have the money. I don't have the money. I don't have the money. I had enough credit card debt or cre credit stuff. I could put it on my credit cards and just deal with the credit card bills. And, you know, it, I didn't want to, I didn't want to spend the money. That's really what it came down to. I could put it on the credit card, but I didn't want to. And then I said to myself, you know what? I can always make more money, but I'm not going to get back that time with my kids. So I said, forget it. We're going to go. We're going to go on a three or four day vacation. And we were supposed to go to Florida. Day or two beforehand, all of a sudden, some hurricane was coming to Florida. And I called up Delta. And I was like, hey, where can we convert our point to somewhere else? So we went to Texas. We went to El Paso, Texas and enjoyed ourselves. We went to uh, a water park, SeaWorld for two days and we had we had a blast. Mm -hmm. So I look at that and say, you know what? Sometimes the expense is worth it because I'm never gonna get that time back with my kids. My daughter's graduating in a month from high school. You know, my son might be ready to, you know, in two years go to a college and be, you know, out of state, seven miles, seven, seven hours mm -hmm. away. So again, you know, that Starbucks coffee, like you just said, it was a vacation for me. I'm like, I don't want to spend the money, but I'm glad, I'm so glad I did because we had a great time. It's memories I had with my kids and 
again, as they get to become adults, it's not as easy just to say, hey, let's go on vacation. No, it's that it's not that way. So, um, you know, again, so, these are so the choices basic, that, yeah. Yeah, basically be, be wise about it and, and, and uh, in the same way that you would maybe use a credit card for an emergency, if there really is something very special, then, right. you know, maybe, maybe it is worth it. And then of course, um, what I'm hearing is that when you have done that, then you go to Nancy and what I'm hearing so clearly because you're such a great person and, and that you make it fun. You help to make it fun to budget or, or allocate or, or sort out these issues that yes. if you were to do it on your own, it's, it isn't fun and, and you don't have someone to, to um, discuss it with, clear it out with. And um, yeah, I can, I can definitely see how it's very valuable to um, get help, like, like anything else, you know? Right, um, right. It's, it's because easier, a lot of people food. don't want to, they might not want to talk to their friends or family about it because they're in Paris. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's like, hey, Nancy, you, yeah. you know, I, I need yeah. to talk to somebody and I hear it time again. I'm so glad I'm working with you because it, it's, it's their accountability to somebody else that is in their corner yes yes so this is really really nice and, and encouraging so so yeah. what else do you help people with is there something else additionally um again i i've got some some uh, free workshops and i do have some courses and so forth i did put it on the uh green and heart website so you have you have my information on the green and heart website so when you click on that link, it'll take you to my webpage. And actually I have a, another seminar coming up um, in two weeks. So if anybody's interested in learning a little bit more or asking some questions, being part, participating and uh, going through one of those first few steps with this, because uh, we'll, we'll do that during the workshop. I've got that, but I've, I've plenty of resources on my, my webpage there. So you can always uh, take a look at it and get in contact with me if, if anybody has any questions. Yeah. So yeah, it's on the greenandheart.com website. Lovely. Thank you so much, Nancy. And we're looking forward to, to um, sharing this again and, and we'll be sending people to, to your website and you. um, good luck. And I'm, I'm really happy that, that this is happening for you. Thank, Thank you so you. much yes, for joining I, us today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>